Hello YouTube. Let's start with the night in the Round Tower on March 3rd of the year 1764 in the city of Copenhagen in the country of Denmark. A certain Peter Rutkiar observes the evening star of, star of Venus with a telescope. He has done it many times before, but this night was completely different because to the great surprise of the researcher, he observed an object next to Venus, which seemed to revolve around the planet named after the goddess of love. A week later, in the presence of witnesses, astronomy professor Christian Horbo confirmed Rutkear's discovery. As Horbo later wrote, I have never seen such a vision in heaven. It literally swallowed me up, and I believed that I had actually seen a satellite of Venus. Astronomers described their discovery of the Venusian moon in articles for the Royal Danish Society of Sciences and Literature. However, since they appeared in Danish, they were almost not noticed by astronomers outside of Denmark. Nevertheless, many agreed with Horbo and Rutkiar that a satellite of Venus exists in reality. The discovery of the satellite of Venus was not the first and not the last time this mysterious celestial body was observed. The first but somewhat dubious observation dates back to 1645 and since then, the satellite of Venus has indicated its presence several times. I have the detailed history of such observations, but the account may be too tedious for most people. But I do have the research. So let me just continue with the most interesting notes. In 1761, one of the very rare events occurred, the passage of Venus across the solar disk. This event lasted about five hours. Astronomers around the world have used this astronomical phenomenon to establish the distance between the Earth and the Sun. From the collected data, a figure of 153 million kilometers was established, uh, which is only 2.3% higher than the current value. And it was also this transit that allowed the Russian scientist Mikhail Vasilyevich Lomonosov to discover the atmosphere of Venus. But he did not observe any satellite. However, many other astronomers took the opportunity to find the satellite of Venus. And among them were those who observed that celestial body. In 1761, the Frenchman Armand Baudouin declared that he had not only established the very fact of the existence of a satellite of Venus, but also its size, the time of revolution around the planet, and the distance to it. Since it turned out that the satellite of Venus is very similar to our moon, this strengthened the belief of Badua and his contemporaries that Venus, like Earth, can be inhabited by intelligent beings. Badua's pamphlet entitled Memoirs of the Discovery of the Satellite of Venus, a treatise on the discovery of the satellite of Venus, caused a great stir and was recognized by many as trustworthy. The satellite of Venus has been widely described in very authoritative publications, such, for example, as the great French Encyclopedia and the English Encyclopedia Britannica. Among those who believed that the satellite of Venus was an obvious fact, was Voltaire, the philosopher Immanuel Kant, and even the Prussian King Frederick the Great. The satellite of Venus was an example of scientific mythology. For almost 20 years, the satellite of Venus has been a very popular topic among astronomers, and it received wide recognition. However, it should be noted that many astronomers of that time were skeptical about this, and they were not at all convinced that it really existed. And in the process of the next transit of Venus on the disk of the Sun, which occurred in 1769, 
no traces of the satellite of Venus were found. Although during the previous transit, reports of the observation of this object were received more than 40 times, it turned out that the satellite of Venus is a phantom. So why did this arise? Maybe there was a satellite, but it was an artificial satellite, most likely of alien extraterrestrial origin. A huge interstellar spaceship located near Venus. Um, and it was easy to see it from the near Earth orbit. However, there are other explanations too. Back in 1760s, Hungarian astronomer Maximilian Hall suggested that the supposed observations of the satellite of Venus were nothing more than visions appearing exclusively in the lenses of telescopes. Almost 100 years later, the Belgian astronomer Paul Strabant suggested that the observations were actually caused by the presence of faint stars that were near Venus during the observations. Both hypotheses are confirmed by experiments and calculations, and by combining them, it would be quite possible to explain the supposed astronomical observations. However, there is still no single satisfactory explanation for the observations made. But now it's not so important. Today, scientists can say with confidence that the satellite of Venus simply does not exist, at least since 1769. All I can say is that our solar system contains unusual objects. I have described in detail the one near the Martian moon Phobos, the one that destroyed the Soviet space probe in 1989. Well, such objects might reappear near other planets, especially if they had once been sighted there before. Space exploration is a very dangerous undertaking, and maybe it should be left to robots and AI. Well, let's cross out the AI, because we will lose control. But that Venetian satellite, where did it embark to? Um, this is what I wanted to let you know today, and I'll bring you more interesting stories about our solar system and the objects that lurk within it. And uh, if you like my research, by all means, please support me. You'll find out how to do it in the description to this uh, video. Please like my videos and subscribe to my channel and tell others. Thank you.